Good morning. Today's video, I'm going to go over strokes and stroke protocol. So, let's go ahead and get into that video right now. So, basically, a stroke, there's two types of strokes. There is an ischemic stroke and a hemorrhagic stroke. An ischemic stroke is usually caused by some type of plaque buildup, usually in um, the carotid arteries, and usually ischemic stroke is caused by like blood flow that was cut off to the brain, so certain areas of the brain start to die off because you have an extraction of blood flow. And that's usually an ischemic stroke. A hemorrhagic stroke, that's usually the worst one because a hemorrhagic stroke is where you have some sort of clot or blockage in the brain and that clot or blockage starts bleeding and that is the worst type of stroke and interventions and everything is basically centered around making sure the person does not have a hemorrhagic type of stroke. Now you may be asking what, how do you know if someone's having a stroke or not? So that brings me to the second point of what a stroke is, signs and symptoms. Um, the signs and symptoms for ischemic and hemorrhagic stroke are basically the same. The only difference is a hemorrhagic stroke usually, usually with the hemorrhagic stroke their blood pressure is going to be extremely, extremely elevated. But there is an acronym for strokes, it's called FAST, and it stands for Face, Arm, Speech, and Time. Face means with the stroke you're going to have facial drooping on one side either right side or left side and so how you determine facial drip is you ask them to smile and one side is not going to be smiling like up like it's supposed to be and that's facial droop that's a sign of stroke then you go to the hospital and then arm they say arm for like arm weakness so like if they suddenly can't use one of the legs or suddenly can't lift or move one of the arms. That's also a sign of a stroke. Usually with strokes it it's usually affects one side so like if something if you have a stroke on this side it's usually going to affect this side. If you have a stroke on this side it's usually going to affect this side. So if you have a stroke on this side and you ask someone to smile they're going to have a facial droop on this side. And then speech, S stands for speech, and that is slow speech. If someone is talking fine to you and their speech starts slow and you can't understand them, also a sign of a stroke. And then time, T stands for time. It's very important that you get someone to the hospital at the first sign of when these, any of these symptoms start because if they are having a stroke and if it's not a hemorrhagic stroke they can get what is called TPA if the if they meet certain criteria for it, and that criteria is usually determined by the neurologist but they have a two hour sometimes three to four hours window they can receive TPA usually best practice is two hours and you may be saying, well, just because you're having the symptoms, does you mean you're having a stroke? No, not necessarily. Um, that's the thing with strokes. You could be having the facial droop or weakness or the slow speech from low blood sugar, high blood sugar, being intoxicated with um, ETOH, also known as alcohol. <laughs> um, so that's why if someone starts having the weakness, the facial droop, slow speech, it's very important they get to the hospital because as soon as they get to the hospital, at least with my hospital protocol, you have 10 minutes from the time they get there to get them to CT to rule out a hemorrhagic stroke. 
Because if they're having a hemorrhagic stroke, they can't get TPA. And in the words of one of my fellow ER nurses, if you give someone TPA to someone who's having a hemorrhagic stroke, it will kill them faster. Because usually people with hemorrhagic strokes, usually they die from it. So if you give them TPA, and they're already bleeding, the TPA is going to make them bleed more. And they will die. So... That's why it's very important when someone comes in with signs and symptoms of a stroke to get them to CT to basically rule out a hemorrhagic stroke to know whether you need to consider TPA. And TPA is basically a big clot busting medication. Which TPA has its pros and cons. Which is why the neurologist makes that call on whether TPA is a good idea or not. But that's why very important from the time symptoms start, from the time the symptoms start, you have two hours to get them to the hospital to see if it's a stroke or not. Because they have two hours to and I wonder if for two hours is you know, possibly get the TPA medication if they're not having a hemorrhagic stroke. And say they're not having a hemorrhagic stroke and it's an ischemic stroke, but neurologist said they can't get TPA for some reason, be that they're outside that window, that two to four hour window, or they're on anticoagulant therapy then basically you would just control their blood pressure and make sure the neurological status does not get any worse usually with strokes you don't want to drop their blood pressure too much because if you drop their blood pressure really really quickly that can cause them to have a stroke if, or have another stroke and so you don't want to do that and you kind of want the map between like 80 and 90 so it gets good perfusion to the brain. All neurologists and nephrologists, kidney doctors will tell you different things, but usually with strokes, they want the patient to be relatively hypertensive because the brain is used to perfusing at that level of what the blood pressure is so if you drop it too much then the brain is not perfusing like it needs to be and then you don't get oxygenated blood flow to your brain things get real bad so and like I said with hemorrhagic strokes that is mm, mostly just blood pressure management and neurological management but like I said blood pressure management you don't want to drop the blood pressure too much because then you will make the situation worse and that's basically it for strokes the biggest thing with the stroke is recognizing the signs and symptoms of the facial droop weakness slow speech right when it happens because you have the two hours they could possibly get the TPA medication for strokes if it's not a hemorrhagic stroke and I hope this helps out a little bit when you're dealing with stroke patients maybe if you work in the ER you probably see this if you're doing clinicals in the ER you probably see this maybe also but I hope this helped a little bit and I will talk to y'all in my next video and y'all have a good day Oh